And good afternoon. We're just now getting our 4 p.m. Hurricane uh, National Hurricane Center update and wanted to bring you some updates because we have seen some changes uh, as expected with this forecast still pretty uncertain and we're going to see some swings in these cones. But you can see here now kind of a westerly push with both of the cones. We'll start with tropical depression, uh, still tropical depression 14 out there in the Caribbean. You can see here there's your depression 35 mile per hour sustained winds and it's not very organized. So you've got a lot of the storms on the northwestern side or northeastern side meaning uh, a lot of that moisture is being pulled up to the north because of shear to the north of it. But if you take a closer look at it, you can see it is trying to get organized a little bit better. Here's where the center is. It's a pretty small vortex and we've got storms starting to form kind of more around it. So wouldn't be surprised to see this organized a little bit more as we go into tonight and into tomorrow. Now the official forecast track, you can see here they've kind of backed off on the intensity a little bit now up to about 50 miles per hour, maybe 65 miles per hour as it approaches the Yucatan. But here's a change as well. They have it a bit further off towards the east, kind of missing most of the uh, the, uh, the the land mass there, which means it would not weaken that much as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. So here's the other big change of the forecast, and it's more of a Texas push towards the system. Here's Houston. I know that looks weird. Here's Corpus Christi, but notice we have more of a turn to the system as we go into Tuesday. This would be great news for South Louisiana. Now, there is still some uncertainty. There's still plenty of uncertainty with this forecast, uh, and we're not going to stop watching it until it actually makes that turn. But notice some trends starting to show up in the models of more of a Texas impact directly, maybe Hurricane Marco at this point, and then weakening as it moves into Texas because of wind shear landfall sometime maybe Tuesday going into early Wednesday as a tropical storm. Of course, we would be on the wet side, the east side, which means we'd see moisture pushing in, maybe some higher than normal tides, and plenty of rainfall is still possible with Tropical Depression 14, which would become uh, Marco. Now, the other storm we're going to be watching, and it kind of looks like this maybe one we're focusing a little bit more on is tropical storm Laura. This formed earlier today. You could see here the big change in the track was earlier. We had it here. They indicated it was down here, so it jumped towards the south, still very unorganized, and that's a key part of the forecast. Whenever you have unorganized systems like this, the models are not going to handle them well. And if you are a model watcher, I know a lot of y'all are, they are not doing good. They're just simply not. I mean, they've done awful with both of these systems, um, so it's a very tricky forecast. Now, what is interesting with this current forecast, notice as we go throughout the weekend over Puerto Rico or near Puerto Rico by Saturday as a tropical storm kind of riding along the island chain there, which would keep the storm probably pretty weak. Now, that's important because we've got a ridge up here that's steering this to the west and a weaker storm is likely going to get further into the Gulf of Mexico. So here's the big change and here's what I know you're going to see on social media everywhere is the track of this thing now bringing it more towards southeast Louisiana as we go into Wednesday night or sometime on Wednesday, possibly as Hurricane Laura. So that is something we'll be watching. Now the intensity as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico is still a big question. There's models that have this as a weak tropical system. There's models that have this as a stronger uh, storm. So we're kind of just playing it in the middle at this point, but a category one storm in the Gulf is what they're forecasting by Monday. Here it is on Tuesday and there it is on Wednesday. Now keep in mind the cone of uncertainty exists for a reason. It could still very well turn to the north. This thing could still go a little bit further to the west. We've seen a huge um, change in our ensemble models, the spaghetti plots that have gone from about here more towards the west. That's why we've changed the forecast of this. So I do expect this to change some more. We don't think this is the final written in stone forecast. This is likely going to change a bit more. We might see the intensity of this go down. We might see it go up. That's why we want you to be prepared as we go into this weekend. And really this weekend is important because tomorrow the weather's going to be pretty quiet. Sunday things will start to go downhill because it uh, depends on what tropical depression 14 does. So um, over the next couple of days, uh, or at least over the next 24 to 36 hours or so, things are looking good. We'll be hot and humid tomorrow with about a 20% chance of showers on Saturday. By Sunday could start to feel some of that moisture and that rainfall from what would be Marco moving into the uh, northern Gulf Coast. It'd be pretty widespread, messy system could bring us some rainfall. We'll have to watch for that. Also watch for isolated tornadoes. Of of course, that's a given. And then as we go into Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, rain chances will go up, winds will creep up. And of course, the exact impacts will depend on 
where these things go and how strong they are. And that is still very unclear. Unfortunately, this is a very tricky forecast, um, much more tr or a bit more trickier than a normal forecast because you're dealing with two tropical systems. So a lot of uncertainties. Now, one thing we do seem pretty certain on is the rainfall. We're uh, a little bit more confident on giving you some totals, maybe three to six inches widespread. That will probably change, to be honest. But right now, it looks like rainfall is what we can really focus on and say is looking like a guarantee for much of the Gulf Coast because you have two tropical systems somewhere is going to see rainfall. So we'll be watching that as we go throughout about Monday through Thursday is your best shot of seeing some of that rainfall. And of course, if we see three to seven inches over, you know, three to four days, no issues there. It's if we get stuck under any of those bands and bands do develop things like that. So that's what we'll be watching uh, pretty closely. Now let's talk about the wind threat because if a hurricane, uh, if the current forecast evolves like they're you know, forecasting, we will have to worry about surge, we'll have to worry about winds. That's still up in the air if that actually happens, but we need to start talking about it because uh, by the about Wednesday is when we could feel those impacts. Here is what we're talking about with uh, what would be Hurricane Marco, Tropical Depression 14, the one moving into Texas. You can see there if the winds do get close to us, if it takes the current track, we probably won't won't see much winds from this, but maybe by Monday afternoon we start to see some breezier conditions, especially along the coast. Now we're talking about Laura, and I'm not sure they've actually updated this part of the forecast. They have not, but you notice the huge swath of the potential to see tropical storm force winds. It's a pretty large area. Now, not everyone is going to see strong winds from these systems. It's going to be near the center, but it just shows you that really along the entire Gulf Coast has that shot of seeing those stronger winds as we go into the middle of next week. So we do need to follow this closely. Um, it is hurricane season. It is the middle of August towards the end of August. Anytime a system gets in the Gulf of Mexico, we have to watch it pretty closely right now. There's just still a lot of uncertainties when we're talking about this. So our steering currents for this uh, and why we're going to be watching these steering currents very closely is because that's what's pushing these things, right? So we've got our Bermuda high here. You've got Laura here. You've got TD 14 going to be Marco here. It's being pulled to the north by this trough and you can see all the moisture being pulled to the north of it. That's what's kept it so unorganized. Then you've got your Bermuda high pushing Laura towards the west northwest. It will eventually start to curve up around that ridge, but it depends on how weak or strong that ridge is when it gets in this area. The reason the models have trended a bit further into the Gulf, I think, is one, because they keep Laura a little weaker as it comes across the islands, but also because this ridge could be a little bit stronger, which would get the Gulf, uh, which would get the storm a bit further into the Gulf. So that's why we're watching for maybe a potential impact, a little bit more direct of an impact from Laura as we go into Wednesday. So the overall message is, I know the forecast shows a hurricane off the coast on Wednesday that will likely jump around a bit. We need you checking back throughout the weekend uh, because, of course, once it is in the Gulf of Mexico, time comes to uh, there's not a whole lot of time to really prepare for anything after that. So I want to show you some of our models and what our steering currents are looking like along with the moisture because right now we're more so focused on the heavy rainfall potential and you can see here here's our Bermuda high here's our jet stream it's actually going to start to lift this ridge will start to build back in here is what we're dealing with with what will become Marco getting into the Gulf by Sunday strengthening they have it become a hurricane by Monday but notice all the moisture associated with it all along the northern Gulf Coast by Monday so even though Laura is way down here we're feeling the moisture and some rain fall from this system by probably late Sunday going throughout Monday. Now into Tuesday, we'll still have some of that moisture over the area from whatever Marco is. There it is making landfall somewhere in Texas, still plenty of moisture. But here comes Laura, Laura with an even deeper kind of envelope of deep moisture. You'd see in the purples there, that's nearly maxing out the scale. So you've got Laura moving up and this model is indicating what the Hurricane Center is kind of forecasting. And then all that deep tropical moisture, heavy rainfall, maybe even strong winds, coastal flooding by Wednesday when we're talking about Laura. So the main days look to be about Monday or Tuesday and into Wednesday, depending on which system we feel most of the impacts from. And that's going to be the big question. So that's why we're not saying uh, for sure Tropical Depression 14 is going to do this or Laura is going to do this. It's kind of more of a general this could happen. So it is a very tricky, uh, tricky, tricky forecast. There's Wednesday afternoon. Now uh, I'll show you some of our ensemble models and what I was talking about with that westerly shift um, it all comes from the National Hurricane Center uses ensemble models, right? They don't just use the GFS or the Euro. They use uh, what we call the GFS ensembles, and it takes 
that model run and runs at many different times with different scenarios and you get different outcomes and that gives us a better idea of what might happen. So each line shows a different model run. Notice this is TD14 Marco. You're starting to see that trend with a more kind of coming to the northwest and a more of a westerly term. There's still models that take it closer to Louisiana, maybe Houston, but you're starting to see more of a cluster in this area. Could that change? Oh, 100% because we do not have a well-defined system yet. Until you get that, your models still are going to flip around. Now let's talk about Laura because it's doing a pretty good job here tracking it over the islands and then there it is by the Gulf of Mexico by Monday and then by Tuesday into Wednesday. Notice the huge spread here. That shows you uh, the huge uncertainty within the model itself. So you've got the westerly track. Earlier it was more of kind of a Florida. Uh, the tracks moved up towards Florida. Now they're a bit further into the Gulf of Mexico, closer to southern Louisiana, maybe south Mississippi as we go into Wednesday. So that's why the model or the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center has shifted because that ridge is a bit stronger in models and it's kind of pushing it a bit further. So that's what we're looking at with that. So let's end this with our seven day forecast and kind of give you an idea if you need to plan for things. If you got plans next week, here's what you uh, what you're going to be looking at. We do have a chance for rain um, tomorrow, but it's pretty low, only about a 20% chance for a few isolated showers during the afternoon. As we go into Sunday, rain chances start to go up a bit more widespread downpours, especially during the afternoon. Still some sunshine though, probably. And then as we go late Sunday into Monday, depending on what Marco does or what will become Marco, we could start to see some heavier rain in the area maybe some breezy conditions, minor coastal flooding as possible. And then by Tuesday and into Wednesday, these will be our main days we're watching, uh, whether it be for Marco or for Laura, depending on which one comes closer to us, um, that could bring us some heavier rain by the middle of the week. Also, we'll be watching for winds and coastal flooding. Of course, that all de depends on what the center of the storm does, which is very much uh, kind of up in the air right now. So that's going to do it for the 4 p.m. update from the National Hurricane Center. Chris will be on at 5 p.m. on Channel 4 and at 6, and then we get our next full update at 10 p.m. later on tonight. Thanks for joining us, everybody.